Hi! In the last video, we saw how we can use the MLR classifier in Weka to run learning algorithms implemented in R from within Weka. Before that, we saw how we can use the R console in Weka to run R commands, for example to plot data. In today's lesson, we'll see how we can use the preprocessing tools implemented in R to preprocess data before we pass that data on to Weka learning algorithms. Okay, let's get started. We will use the knowledge flow environment in Weka to process data in R and then pass it on to a Weka learning algorithm. The knowledge flow environment, once the R plugin has been installed, provides an R script executor component that executes a user supplied R script. So we can put this on the canvas and then right click on it or double click on it to configure it. What we can see here is that we can enter an R script or we can load a script from a file. Right, before we start with our script, we should load some data. So we need a data source. Let's use an R floater data source. Okay, maybe we just use the iris data to start off with. And then we make a data set connection to our R script executor. So now the data will be loaded as an R file in Java, then it will be passed to the R environment and the data that is processed by this R script will be passed back into Weka. So that, for example, we can visualize it. And we can put a scatter plot matrix here and then once we've configured our R script, we can connect it up to the R script executor. Something very simple that we can do in our R script is to delete one of the attributes from the incoming data. The incoming data is referred to by the name R data just as it's done in the R console in the Explorer as well. And then in brackets, we can specify which columns of this data we want to keep. Let's say we just want to keep the first four attributes in the data and discard the class attribute. Now, this command will be executed and then the result will be passed into Weka as an R file. So we can now connect our R script executor component to the scatterplot matrix component using a data set connection. Right, let's try this. So we run the flow. And now let's check the plot by right clicking on the component. As we can see, we've got a scatterplot matrix here, which has four of the attributes, but not the class attribute. So it all worked as intended. Let's try something more sophisticated. We want to pre-process the data using one of R's many pre-processing tools. More specifically, we want to use independent component analysis to decompose the input data into statistically independent components. We want to do that using the fast ICA library in R. So first we need to install this library in R. We can do that from the knowledge flow if we enable the R perspective. Perspectives allow us to implement additional functionality in the knowledge flow. There's an R console perspective here. Let's tick this. Okay, now you can see up here we have an additional R console, which is just the same as the R console in the Explorer. So to install the fast ICA package, we can just go install packages fast ICA. Now that this is installed, we can use the library in our R script. So we go back to the data mining processes perspective and now we can change our script to make use of this fast ICA library. First of all, we need to load the library into R. So we have library fast ICA as the first statement in our script. Now, for convenience, let's just define a variable that allows us to specify the number of components we want to extract from our data. Let's say we want to extract as many components as there are predictor attributes in our data. So we say num equals n call, which is the function that gives us the number of columns in the data, n call of r data minus one. So this would be four in the case of the iris data. Now we can call the fast ICA function. Fast ICA, we specify the data we want to use. We go from one to num, 
these are the columns that we want to perform our independent component analysis on. And then we say how many components we want to extract. Also num. Right. Now, fast ICA actually returns a list of results in R. Now, if we uh, check the fast ICA documentation on the web, we see that there are actually several things that are returned by the fast ICA function. Let's search for fast ICA documentation R. And this page here at the R documentation.org site looks helpful. Right. Now, if you look at the documentation for the function, you can see that it returns several values. It returns the pre processed data matrix and then several other things. What we want here is the estimated source matrix. The source consists of the estimated components, the independent components. So we want to use the S value from the result. And we can get that value by adding dollar sign $S at the end of the invocation of the function. So this will extract the independent components from the result. Right, we are almost done now. This will actually return the independent components as a matrix. However, to be able to pass the data back into Weka, we need to make this matrix into a data frame. To make this into a data frame, we can just call the data frame function, data.frame, and we put the whole thing into brackets. Let's try this out. Now we should see the independent components that have been extracted from the data. They are called x1 to x4. You can see here that the independent component analysis has produced the desired results. For example, if you look at the relationship between x1 and x4, those two uh, components look pretty much statistically independent. So we've run independent component analysis on the data and passed the data back into the Weka environment. Let's run a learning algorithm on this data. As you know, the naive base learning algorithm assumes that the attributes are conditionally independent given the class attribute. So it's a plausible hypothesis to assume that data pre-processed using ICA is easier to classify using naive base. In order to run a supervised learning algorithm on the data, we need to attach the original class labels to the data again. We can do that quite easily using the cbind function, the column bind function in R. So we go cbind and then the two sets of columns that we want to bind together. Now here we need to assign this data to a variable. Let's call this variable D so that we can refer to it in the cbind function. We want to bind the columns in D and the class column in the R data data frame. We address this column using square brackets again and the index of this column is num plus one. That's the last column in our R data. So that's the class column in the iris data. So now we will have labeled data. Let's try this. Okay, now we can see that the class attribute has been added. So we have the data decomposed into independent components using ICA and then labeled again with the original class labels. So now we can run a learning algorithm on this data. For example, naive base. What we need to do is go into the evaluation package and choose the class assigner to assign the class attribute to our data. We make a data set connection to this class assigner. By default, it just uses the last attribute. So this is fine. Then we pass the data to the cross validation fold maker. And from there, we pass the data to naive base. both the training set and the test set. And after we have added the classifier, we need to evaluate the classifier. So we take a classifier performance evaluator and we use a batch classifier connection to connect naive base to it. Right, and finally, we want to see the output of the evaluation process, so we use a text viewer and we use a text connection from the classifier performance evaluator. Right, so let's run this flow. Okay, it's finished and 
we can get the cross-validated accuracy now in this text viewer. 98% accuracy. This is quite a high accuracy on the iris data. So it looks like independent component analysis has helped to improve performance. Note that strictly speaking, we have performed semi-supervised learning in this experiment because we used an unsupervised feature extraction method on the whole data set before we applied cross-validation on the data set. Right, this was to show you a bit of how to use R from the knowledge flow. We've covered all the aspects of how to use R in Weka now. So that's it for this topic. See you later.